what this is is my narrated run of the Bunker 2 level of GoldenEye on License to Kill mode, which means there's one hit kills all around for the most part. And what you're going to do to start off with is get the key using the magnet in Bond's watch. And we're going to wait for the guard to come back around. And there has to be a, a certain area where the guard has to be in order for Bond to get out or he won't get killed. I mean, already a little tense moment there because I missed with the slapper. And from here what we're going to do is pick off some guards using one hit shots from the KF-7 Soviet gun and the point of this little part is to just draw as many guys out of that hallway as possible because that hallway is really it's really hard to uh, kill guards in that hallway without either being seen by the camera or just getting shot yourself because the angle is so awkward there and since I've gotten all them what I'm waiting for now are there's three or maybe four I think it's three guards that will come down from the other side of the bunker and we'll go in that room on the left but I'll get them before they enter that room because I would have to just deal with more guards because there's three guys in the room on to the left that I'm waiting to get until later I'll take this moment now to explain to you what License to Kill rules are in GoldenEye. It's going, playing the game on the 007 difficulty and setting the enemy health to 0% and then setting all the other settings to a thousand, either 1000% 1, or 100% or whatever their maximum levels are. And for the most part, it's one hit kills all around. It takes one shot for guards to kill Bond and it takes Bond one shot to kill guards. The only exception to that is if Bond gets shot with the Clob, which is the weakest gun in the game, in which in which case it takes two shots to kill Bond. So in some levels, like the Bunker, Bunker 2 and the Archives, you can use that to your advantage, and you, you can get away with being shot. So what we're doing here is just picking up the ammo and then carefully move down the hallway because you never know there might be more guards there. And then at this little T-junction or whatever you want to call it, there will be more guards that patrol the area ahead of you that we need to deal with before moving into the other part of the, the bunker. So what we're doing now is just waiting. That's the best angle to really do this at. I would add, if you're doing this, a max stats run of this, you would have to take this, approach this much differently. You would have to organize some sort of a safe spot, like back in the jail cell where you, jail cell where you came in and used throwing knives or something to kill these guys. I haven't played this level too much on max stats just because it, at least for me, it gets kind of frustrating. But I'm not all that good. So, oh, I missed one guy, but I decided to shoot him anyway, and then the room that I just walked by on the right, I'm just waiting for more guards to come, but I don't, there, there aren't any more. You have to pick up a document which compares staff, it's just like a staff casualty list or something like that but there's two guys in there and you can really either shoot one it doesn't matter which order you do them in but and we pick up the document pick up the ammo and leave I normally go this way I don't go the back way just because taking out those drone guns, I think, makes too much noise. All I'm doing here is just getting that guy's attention down the hall where the gun, where the, or where the camera is, and taking him out at a right angle. But there's regenerator rooms, like 
the room that I just was in that had the document, and the other room that's catty corner from where you start that if you make too much noise, the guards in there will just keep regenerating. And right here we're just taking out the cameras, and then I'm just going to take out this guy with a slapper. Sometimes he can actually hear the wind of the slapper and will turn around and shoot you, but if you're quick enough, you shouldn't have that happen. And there's one guard in here that has one of the keys for the safe. And then there's one more, there's another camera in here which I'll take out. If you shoot the lens of the camera, it'll explode in one shot. If you don't shoot the lens, it'll take more shots to take it out and you run the risk of having the alarm go off, which basically means you have to restart. So what we're going to do now is go back into that other, what I call, regenerator room and take out the guys in there. There's three guys in there and they're pretty easy to take out, but my the way I do it is to make sure that door op that door is open, peek into the window, shoot one guy, run back to the the jail, and just wait for the other two guys to come. And as you can see, only one guy actually came. The other guy just went out to the spot where I shot him from, and then, but only. I thought only two guys came, but... And then... A little bit of a weird situation here, I couldn't find the key. So I looked everywhere for it, and I even went... Back here... Right now I'm looking for it, but I only... I only have the one key that the other guy dropped. But I still went back to the other room where the other guy that had the key was and just made sure I actually picked it up in there, which I, of course I did, but just for, just to be thorough, I made sure I picked, actually did pick it up. And as it turns out, it was just lying right next to the door, but I just didn't see it just because it was in the corner in there. And there I saw it and pick it up. And in there is a dossier and two silence PP7s, which I'll now use for the remainder of the level. And I can go this way because I've already cleared this hallway out of guards. And this is probably the hardest part of the level here, is there's one guard in there that has the other half of the documents that you need to compare the staff casualty lists. And he's all the way in the back. And what I normally do is just leave that door open. Basically the same strategy I used in that room earlier. But before that, I'm going to take out the camera that's at the end of the hall. And for some reason, that one seems more susceptible to going off if you miss. Or, to it, or if it takes multiple shots to take it out. But luckily it didn't go off there. And basically we're going to use the same strategy as we did before in the other room. And just peek in the window might not even be able to see the guard with, with through YouTube's compression. It's kind of dark back there. And all we're going to do is just shoot the guard, open the door, make sure I can get out. But as it turns out, the door's going to shut anyway. But it doesn't matter because the guys don't come that fast. And all we're going to do is peek in the window, shoot the guard, and then leave. And then I, I take the long way around to get... Basically, I'm just going to end up going right back to the jail. But I take the long way around just so there's a less of a chance that guards will follow me back there. They're not going to take the, the short way. There are only, as I've found out through years of playing this game, that when guards chase after you, they only go on the path that Bond took. They don't take shortcuts like they could have done here. They only, they only follow the route Bond took. So what we're going to do is just wait here for a minute or so and then head back out into the bunker and just track down the guards that followed me. And now we're gonna just be careful going around all the corners and make sure that there's nobody there but there won't be anybody until farther back. But it's always good to just go back to your farthest back safe spot just, just to be thorough. And still be careful going around the corners, but I always play this 
In situations like this, I always play the game a lot cons more conservatively than I should. The first guard is actually in a really awkward angle from this door. He's right to the left, and you can't see it. And right... no. I back up more, and then right there he turns around. And actually, I think he jumps to the side. I don't think he shoots me, and I just shoot him there and took him out. But you just that's something, just, just something you have to be careful about. And then there are the other guards that were in that room are all the way back over in that doorway where I shot the guy with the document from. And there's two guys over there. And amazingly, I shoot one, and the other guy doesn't even come. He keeps standing there. So I don't know if that's... I guess that's just an AI glitch or something. And I'm just checking the room, make sure that nobody's in there. There may still be guys in those in those alcoves over there. I think this is actually supposed to be a loading dock, but they didn't really do a very good job representing it as such. And then what we're gonna do now is get Natalia and get out, but there's still all the guards in the um, golden eye room. that we have to take out, and there's also one last camera. And I'm just gonna stand back from afar and just pick off guys as I see them. There's two more guys standing on either side of the door down there. That was probably a mistake to do that, but... Another sort of tense part of this run is this part here with the guys up in the that little elevated area and I just totally missed shooting him. And why how he didn't follow me back to that little corner, I have no idea. I really thought he was gonna come around the corner. But he didn't, and as it turns out, there's two guys standing there facing each other. They're probably actually standing right in front of each other, and I just went ballistic with the silence PP7 and took them out. But that's everybody. And Natalia, well, there's still the camera to take out. Forget, forget about that. And that completes the objective for the security cameras, and Natalia's going to check the computer, but going in that hallway trips her to run out and before leaving I just check my objectives to make sure I've completed them all and of course I have that leaving the facility automatically completes objective E and that is the level and then here I let you take a look at the stats for the run obviously not a lot of headshots mostly body hits and then what we're going to, last thing I'm going to show is just the fact that I didn't have any cheats on. And that's about it.